Chemistry lecture number 14, Elements and Compounds. Mixtures are materials that can be easily separated into its components by physical means. Uh, for example, a sand and water mixture can be separated by filtration. If you pour a bucket of sand mixed with water through uh, some filter paper, the water will go through the paper and the sand will get uh, caught behind. Um, a salt water mixture can be separated by heating the mixture and boiling off the water. So we're using physical means to separate the components of these uh, materials. Um, but there are some types of matter that cannot be separated uh, into additional components by physical means, and these types of, uh, of matter are called substances. So substances is matter that cannot be uh, separated into additional components by physical means, and there are two types of uh, substances, compounds and elements. Compounds are substances that cannot be broken into additional components by physical means, However, uh, they can be broken apart by chemical means, such as electricity, extreme heat, and treatment with another substance. For example, water is a compound made of oxygen and hydrogen gas. Uh, we can subject water to all manner of physical treatments, such as uh, filtration and moderate heating. Um, but neither process will cause the water to separate into hydrogen and oxygen. So. Um, we can't sh separate oxygen and hydrogen if we uh, shake it, so I have a container of water, no matter how hard I shake it, um, I can't get the hydrogen and the uh, oxygen to separate. Uh, I could try filtering it, so let's see, I've got a strainer here where we can filter things, and if I pour the water through a filter, I still get uh, water. Okay, so the water is still water. The oxygen and hydrogen have not separated out. Um, and if I try to uh, heat the water to a moderate degree, uh, the water just evaporates. It doesn't uh, break apart into uh, hydrogen and uh, oxygen. So physical treatments uh, will not break water apart. But if electricity is passed through water, uh, it will separate into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, extremely high temperatures will cause water to decompose into hydrogen and oxygen. And also, when water is placed in contact with some metals, the oxygen from the water will bond with the metal and liber uh, liberate hydrogen gas. So here, for example, if you uh, treat water with or mix water with iron that's been heated uh, up somewhat, um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the oxygen from the uh, water will bond with the iron and uh, create rust and then liberate uh, hydrogen gas. Also, if you throw something like uh, sodium into water, uh, that will cause hydrogen to be liberated from the water. So, uh, just a quick review of these uh, three types of uh, chemical treatment. Uh, passing electricity through uh, causes uh, chemicals to, uh, compounds to sometimes fall apart. Uh, extremely high temperatures uh, will cause uh, compounds to decompose. Now, I have to add here that most of the time, if it takes high temperatures to break a uh, a substance into its components, it's probably a compound. There are some compounds that do fall apart at uh, low temperatures, but in general, as a general trend, um, if it takes a high temperature to get it to uh, break apart, it's probably a compound. Okay, and uh, the example of water being in contact with metals, well, that's one substance being treated with another substance when you mix the two uh, substances together. So that's what we mean when we say that when we treat one substance with another substance, we basically try to mix them together, and then sometimes a chemical reaction occurs, uh, causing a separation of uh, components. Compounds can be chemically broken apart into elements. An element uh, is similar to a compound in that it, too, cannot be broken apart into additional components by uh, physical means. Um, however, elements also cannot be broken apart by chemical means, either. Uh, no treatment of any type can cause an element to decompose into additional substances. So here are two examples of uh, some elements I have. Here's the element silver, and there's the element gold. And <clears throat> 
I can try heating both of these to extreme temperatures and the silver isn't going to break apart into two new substances. And I can pass electricity through the gold and uh, no electricity and uh, no substances will be made. Um, I can try treating these substances with uh, different chemicals, but uh, the silver will still remain intact. And I can try reacting the uh, gold with different substances and uh, the gold will still be the gold. In fact, gold is uh, kind of resistant to a chemical reaction. There, I can only think of a handful of chemical reactions that are occur with gold. Most of the time, uh, gold just doesn't react. And that's what makes it so valuable. All right. <clears throat> so, um, let me talk a little bit more about uh, elements, just to clarify the definitions. So an element is the simplest form of matter that cannot be broken into simpler substances. We can't uh, heat it or boil it or filter it or pass electricity through it. Uh, we can't do anything to get it to fall apart. Uh, compounds are made out of elements. When you take elements and uh, put them together, you form compounds. And compounds, uh, you can't break them apart unless you use uh, chemical methods to separate them into elements. All right, so let's sort of give a, a summary of all the different types of uh, categories of matter that we have. Uh, matter tends to fall into two groups, substances and mixtures. Substances can be blended to form mixtures. Um, mixtures can be separated into substances. Uh, mixtures can also be heterogeneous or homogeneous. Substances are either compounds or elements. Compounds are made out of elements. And let me show you a diagram that sort of summarizes all these words here. So here we are. Here we have matter, and matter falls into two categories. Mixtures and substances. Mixtures are made when you take substances and you physically blend them together. Right. And then uh, mixtures are easily separated into substances uh, through physical changes, through moderate heating, filtering. And mixtures can be divided into two uh, categories, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. This is basically just appearance. Uh, homogeneous mixtures have one phase. A heterogeneous mixture is a mixture that uh, has two or more phases in it. You can see different sections in it. Substances fall into two categories, elements and compounds. Compounds are made out of elements. And if you take elements and fuse them together, you can make compounds. The only way you can turn uh, compounds into their component elements or fuse elements into compounds is through chemical changes. You would have to use uh, chemical methods to either break them apart or uh, fuse them together. And by the way, uh, this chart kind of explains why the early alchemists uh, were unable to turn gold, uh, or sorry, unable to turn substances into gold. Uh, the early alchemists thought that uh, gold was a, a mixture, and they thought that uh, if they mixed the right uh, components together, they could end up with uh, gold. So they thought that uh, gold was... Uh, I guess a homogeneous mixture, and that all they had to do was just mix the right substances together and they would end up with gold. Well, in reality, uh, gold was an element. And you can't combine things to create gold, and uh, gold does not fall apart to uh, create uh, uh, substances either. So, of course, the alchemists didn't have the benefit of uh, modern chemistry, but... There we are. If they knew a little bit more, they could probably figure out that, uh, well, I guess eventually they did figure out that uh, gold was not a mixture of anything. Gold is just a substance onto itself, an element. All right. Now, I want to show you a demonstration of converting uh, water into oxygen and hydrogen. So this is going to be a chemical change. We're going to turn a compound into a uh, elements. These are elements. The way we'll do it is, first I need some uh, electricity, so I have some electricity right here. Got my battery and I've got uh, these two little wires with uh, pencil leads at the end of it. And I'm going to stick these uh, ends into the water and what will happen is at one end hydrogen gas is going to be made and at the other end uh, oxygen gas will be made. So this will be a chemical change. Alright, let's see. So bear with me while I get things set up a little bit. I want the camera to be able to see this. 
So I'm going to put this right here. Okay. I guess that doesn't look too bad. All right, so let's see. All right, so I've got my uh, little black probe here and my little red probe here, and I'll put uh, both probes in. So you'll see some bubbling, and the bubbling is going to be uh, oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. So let's see how this looks. There we go. You see the bubbling that's occurring around uh, this one? All right. So over here, oxygen gas is being made, and over here, it's hydrogen gas that's bubbling. So this is an example of a chemical change. Um, a compound, water, is being broken apart into its component elements, and we weren't able to get it to break apart by heating it or shaking it, but we had to uh, use chemical methods to separate it. Okay. All right. Alrighty. To obtain a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 14, Elements and Compounds.